going to work on making this handbag today. I'm sorry you can't see it good. The angle's just kind of like all wrong on this. But anyway, um, I'm going to show you the first steps to create the pattern. Okay. <clears throat> now I already have my pattern cut out here. And uh, what I'm just going to do is go over each piece with you and the measurements for it. The first piece I created is the bag body, which is, it is 15 inches long across the top. The bottom is, if you don't count this little opening for the gusset here, is down 12 inches. So from the top to the bottom is 12 inches. Our gussets are going to be one and a half inches each gusset. And what I did was I cut it out all square and then I measured my gussets and I did that on the fold so that I knew that I had everything uniform. Now the next thing you need is the piece that will go across the top of the bag that you're going to put the zipper on. And that's going to be um, three inches wide by, of course, 15 inches to match the the width of the bag. Perhaps now I modified this because actually in the bag that I just I showed you at the beginning of the video that I made, I used this piece and cut it on the fold to make the straps. And I felt like those straps were a little bit longer than what I really was going for. So I just went ahead and created another piece. And that's going to be 13 inches by 3 inches. So it's 13 inches long and 3 inches wide. And then we'll get about a 26 inch strap but when you count the putting it down in there and sewing it it's going to be about a 24 inch strap all told. So that is our pattern pieces. Now the next thing that we have to do for this bag piece every piece of this pattern is going to have interfacing and um, including the straps, the, the top part for the zipper, inside and out to make it a nice firm bag. So you're going to have, you're going to cut two pieces of the outer fabric. You're going to cut two pieces of the lining fabric. You're going to cut four pieces of the fusible interfacing. And that's for the bag body. For the strap, the straps, really easy. You're going to cut two pieces for the strap and you can't see it here but there's two two pieces of the fusible interfacing to go on those straps. This piece, the band that goes around the top of the bag, you're going to cut four pieces of whatever fabric you want to use and four pieces of the fusible interfacing. This is the interfacing that I'm using. I like to use this one for bags because it's nice and sturdy. For everything to make this bag, for all of your fabrics, your interfacing and all that, for fabric, you're going to, you could probably get away with, if you're just going to use it the way I am, just this is the only part of this particular fabric that I'm using and it'll be the outside portion, bottom portion of the purse. You can do about a yard of this. Um, if you're going to use the fabric for the lining to make the straps and the band around the top, it would be a safe bet to get at least a yard and a half or two yards. For the interfacing, get at least three yards to do one bag. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and iron each piece of interfacing onto the back of its um, coordinating piece of fabric. So, you know, you would... I hope... Even if you're new to sewing, I hope you know that you know how to do interfacing. But you would turn the fabric on it with the wrong side facing up. You would take the interfacing, and this fusible interfacing has a shiny side, and it has a matte side. The shiny side obviously has the glue, so you would put that down on the wrong side of the fabric. You would set your iron. I kind of set mine on high for the, um, and I do it on the front first because it seems to do better. I iron over the front piece first and then I carefully iron over the back piece and sometimes if you have your iron too high it tends to want to make this interface and wrinkle up so you might want to turn it down just a little bit to do the back. But I saw a video or a blog recently and it's really helpful. I, I think I 
demonstrated that on my video I have on how to do interfacing. But she used a spray bottle. You can just get any spray bottle, you know, one of those that costs like 97 cents at Walmart. And uh, you just put water in it and spray it on there. And it really works well for spraying the interfacing side. When you want to iron it, you just spray a little bit of water on it and iron it. And it keeps it from wrinkling up like that. And I almost forgot. <laughs> you need a zipper. This zipper is way too long. This is a 24 inch zipper, but it's what I had and I can make it work. It's actually, I think, made for like a sweater or a jacket, but it's okay. I'm going to make it work for what I need it for. So I have all of my interfacing ironed onto all of my pieces. You can see, I just want to show you that right quick. There. So right onto it. The first step to beginning to construct this bag is we're going to get the straps ready and then we're going to sew them. And I don't really like to do turn straps, especially for long straps like this because it's so messy and it's such a tedious process. Um, so what I'm going to do is first thing I'm going to fold over, I think this is maybe two thirds of an inch. And I'm eyeballing it. One of my viewers said she liked my eyeballing <laughs> statement that I always make. But it just it works for me. Sometimes I'm just better at guesstimating than I am at, you know, <laughs> trying to measure something out. Okay, now I've got that side ironed down. Now what I want to do is fold this one over about an inch. And they're, they're almost meeting. You can see there that they're... They're just about touching, but one side is um, wider than the other one. Alright, and after I've done that, the smaller side, I'm going to take it and fold it over onto the larger side and you see it's not really meeting right on the edge here. I just want it close to the edge about a third of an inch. And I'm going to go ahead and press that down. I love it when it comes together so smoothly. All these patterns are meeting up like it's just so neat. That hardly ever happens for me. Now, we're going to set this one aside and do the exact same thing with the other strap. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the machine and I'm going to sew just along the edge of this folded edge here. Okay, to sew these straps, I am putting my stitch length on a 4.0 stitch length just because it's a thicker material and I want to, you know, a little bit of longer stitch. I'm turning my speed down to medium. I'm putting my woven fabric setting on heavy because it is kind of thick with this interfacing in it. And then I'm going to line this up and I'm, I'm basically using the edge of this presser foot to kind of gauge where... I need to be with this um, line so no matter what I want my presser foot to stay on the edge of this because even if this is ironed a little uneven it's still going to look even so we're going to do a back stitch right quick and then I'm going to sew all the way down and I'm going to do that with both straps So I've got both of my straps sewn together. The next step is to get our outer bag piece. I just have a little pencil here. You can, you can use a fabric 
pen or a pencil if it, you're more comfortable with that, but I'm fine with a pencil because the marks aren't going to show. I'm going to line up the bag and fold it evenly in the middle across the width and just kind of press it with my finger and I'm going to I'm going to mark this middle. Don't mark too far down because it will show about a quarter of an inch so I can see it. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to, at the three, I'm going to put the three where that middle mark is. And then I'm going to mark over here at the end, very end of the ruler. And then I'm going to mark the six so that my straps will be six inches apart. Now I don't, with the second piece, I don't want to do that fold over and do it that way. I want to line it up with this first piece and just put it close to the edge where I can see those markings. I'm going to mark this in the middle, mark this line right here, mark this line right here. Now I've got a placement for my straps. This line that where I sewed the the strap together, I want it to be on the inside so I want to be looking at it when I put the straps down here so that when it flips over you got this part, the clean part of the strap where you can't really see that fold. And I'm going to put them on the outer edge of each one of these these two markings that I put on the sides here. I'm going to pin it. And always make sure after you pin it that your pin didn't cause that to shift away from where you wanted it. And then making sure that I haven't, you know, don't crisscross your straps and mess that up. Now I'm going to take this one and put it on the outer edge of that marking. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these bag pieces over to the machine and just close to the top edge, I'm just going to tack these straps on so that they don't move around. And I'm using the exact same settings I used to sew the straps. I've got a, a longer stitch length on medium speed on heavy fabric. So you see I've got my straps just stitched on there just to keep them in place. Now the next thing we want to do is take these little band pieces that are going to be the top band of the bag where we're going to place the zipper. I'm going to line it up with the top of this, right sides facing together, and start pinning it just in a few places. And I found keep your pin low so that the stitch doesn't pass over it because sometimes those pins with all these thick layers, they'll get bunched up. Most time you can sew over them pretty safely, but with all this thick fabric, I think it causes a little bit of a problem. So I just pin them low so that the stitch is not going to pass across the pin. And I always make sure that I pin close to these straps to keep that stuff in place. And I'm going to do this with all the pieces. That includes these um, lining pieces. I'm going to pin them and then I'm just going to sew across the top here. So I've got these band pieces sewn onto each piece of the fabric. Now the next thing that I want to do is to take each piece, flip it over to the wrong side, and open up this seam and press each one I'm down. And that includes the outer part of the bag with the straps on it too. Okay, when we get to the, the bag piece and we do this part, the way I, I want to do it is I want that, 
that piece of the strap that's, that's sticking out here to be ironed down this way. You don't want to try to fold it up this way because that, that's just messy. And the next step that we're going to do is kind of important to making sure that that's laying down facing towards the bottom of the bag. We should probably do the outside, the, the front part too, just to make sure that it's all laying down nice and neat. Now what I want to do is, I kind of want to make sure this part stays down. So I want to go over to the machine and with a, a wide stitch, I'm going to stitch along this bottom part. I'm not going to stitch up here because then I would be stitching over the strap and I don't want to do that. Just to stitch it down and keep these seams down, I'm going to stitch right along the edge of this line here. And I'm going to do that with both pieces of the front of the outside of the bag. For the inside of the bag, it doesn't really matter. You can stitch one side or the other or both. But um, for it, I'm probably going to do the top part. Just stitch close because that's what I did with the first bag I made. I'm just going to show you what I did. I just... Uh, can you even see that? Yeah, see, I sewed a... So to line just along there. It just keeps that seam in place and it kind of gives it a neater look. The reason for doing it on the outside of the bag, which I didn't even think to mention was my reason for doing it, is to keep these straps down too. That kind of keeps them from shifting around. So that's why you do the bottom one for the body of the bag on the outside. Our next step is going to be to install our zipper in my zipper out. Since I have like a really long zipper, I can kind of position it where I want. And I don't want this open part of the zipper on it, so I'm going to kind of place it a little over, overlapping on the edge here. I'm going to pin the zipper on. Hopefully the zipper works out because it's meant for a sweater or a coat, but it's the, like I said, it was the only zipper I had that would work for this project. So. So the first thing we need to do to put our zipper on is get our zipper foot. Snap this one off. I'm going to be sewing two layers because I'm going to sew this um, zipper onto the top of the outside of the purse first. And then I'm going to flip it over and sew the lining side to it. So I'm setting my stitch length on 3.5. I'm turning my speed down to medium speed. I've got the fabric on lightweight because it's it's pretty light fabric. Now see I've got this outside of the bag sewn and you want to make sure, I, I meant to say that, that the zipper pull is facing that right side of the fabric. Because if you don't, you're sewing the zipper backwards. You're sewing it where it'll be inside the bag. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this piece with the right side facing and I'm going to line it up and I'm going to pin it on this side I've already sewn because what I'm going to do is this stitch line from where I sewed the outside of the bag onto the zipper. I want to follow it exactly so that it's even and you know I, I'm when I turn them out, it's not, you can't see the stitch line from the other one that you sewed. So I'm just going to sew right over that stitch line. And this makes it easier than if you tried to line it up and, you know, you could do them both at the same time, but I found that it's just kind of difficult for me to do. To me, this is the easier way to do it. So I was going to finish all of this up off camera and then come back, but I felt like there might be some newbies that really you know were really new to sewing and wouldn't understand what I had done. So you see how I've got both of these pieces sewn on the same side of the zipper with wrong sides facing together. When you fold it over like this the wrong sides would be together. And then you see I've got the other side of the zipper where I'm going to have to attach the outer part of the bag and the inner part of the bag doing the exact same thing. But the first thing I want to do 
Anyway, if you're, you have a zipper that has plastic teeth like this, at this step, you need to be very careful that you do not let your iron touch this because it will melt the zipper teeth and it will ruin it. So you just want to take the tip of your iron, press down. You want to do it on both sides. I'm going to, I've got this side pressed down and I'm going to take the other front side of the bag and it gets a little tricky here because it gets bulky with those handles in there but I want to line up with the right sides facing together when you do this part and I'm going to line up all of these with the the ones that I've already sewn underneath here and I'm going to pin it and go over there and sew it and do the exact same thing that I did with this side and then I'm going to fold them out and press them so that this line right here is nice and neat. I realize I've a limited amount of space here and it's going to be hard to see but you see I have all the layers sewn onto the bag. Our next step will be to take this bag we're going to put the right sides together. That will be the right sides of the outside of the bag and the right sides of the lining of the bag. And with the straps, you just kind of want to go ahead and kind of fold them up in there. And we're going to line everything up. And we're going to pin all the way around. Now I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to come back and show you the next step. Okay. I just I wanted to come in right quick because I forgot to say that before you go um, pinning all this together, make sure you open the zipper about two-thirds of the way down because you're going to need it open for this step or else it's going to be really difficult to get back into the bag. You're going to have to undo something and redo it. What I'm going to do is sew all the way around, but instead of, of leaving a, an opening here at the bottom of the bag, what I want to do is leave one on the side. I just I like that better and I'm going to close it up with a, a blind stitch or a hidden stitch when I'm done. But I'm going to leave the gussets open. These little parts right here, we're not going to sew that. We're going to sew all the way around, skipping the gussets, sewing the bottom, sewing the sides, and leaving a hole in one of the sides, almost big enough to get your hand in so you can turn it. Okay. I've sewn all the way around, and I've left an opening here on the side in the lining. You don't want to do it on the outside of the bag. You want to do it and leave the opening for turning on the lining. So now... I just need to clip my zipper. If you have a zipper that um, was bigger than what you needed, like mine was, you can clip it at this point. I don't like to clip it before now because if something goes wrong and that was, you couldn't, you know, that zipper didn't work out for that bag, you could take it out and use it for something else. So it went pretty easy over that zipper since it was a plastic zipper. And one thing with these gussets. <coughs> The reason I cut them so small is because I'm going to try something different. And I could do the um, sewing the whole thing square and then pinching the point of the gusset and sewing across. But that always causes issues with me that, like, getting the, the outside of it will fold over and it just causes a pinch or a pleat in it and it looks terrible. So I'm not doing it that way. But the, the original bag that I showed in the beginning of the video the gussets were about two and a half inches and this is one and a half because I want to try something a little different because those gussets just never seem to work out right. The, you know, it's hard to get that cut perfect. But what I'm going to do first is open up the seams on both sides of this, these holes in the corner. And this is the part where you're just going to have to play around with this bag and get it open and flat because if any of this is bunched up it's going to show. It's going to be in your final product. So now what I want to do is crossways like this once I've got everything laying flat I'm going to put some pins. I'm putting these pins down low you can see they're not right at the edge because of what I am fixing to do. 
So you need to get this as flat as you can. You're going to mess up the pretty ironing that you did on your bag when you put the interfacing on. But I think this is going to be worth the trouble. So just right at the edge of this, I'm going to take my ruler. And I'm going to try to keep this line even. I'm going to make a line across it, marking it with a pencil or a fabric pen, whatever you have available. And then what I'm going to do, seems like an extra step, but I, I just feel like it's going to be worth it. See, now I've cut that nice and clean and the stinking thing weren't being, okay. Now I'm going to open up them seams and I'm going to sew across this. So I'm going to go ahead now that I've done that and made that cut there, I'm going to pin these these seams open on both sides so that I don't sew them closed because that the, really the bag does not look good when these end up getting sewn over. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do this with all four corners of the outside of the bag and the lining of the bag. I've got all of my gussets and line them up and check them. They look pretty even and I hope that this worked out the way I showed you to do it because um, it's the first time I'm trying it that way. But now what we need to do is get into the opening we left in our bag and we want to reach through and get to this outer part of the bag and start pulling it through. And I've always found that getting those handles through first seems to make it a little easier to get everything else through. So. And if you can, you can go ahead and get your hand in there and open that zipper the rest of the way up. Once you've got it all turned, you don't really need to be concerned with poking out the corners of the lining because it's going to be inverted. It's not going to be out like the outside of the bag. But once you've got that, you can take and start poking out these corners of the outside of the bag. Probably the easiest way to do it to begin with is with your hands. And then if you need to use a wooden dowel, you can do that. But if you made the hole big enough like I did this time with this one, you can get your hand in there and get everything straightened out. Yeah, I like the way the corners came out on this. So that is definitely what I would recommend doing if you're going to do gussets. Because these, these corners are pretty much perfect. I am super pleased with that. I'm just going to go ahead and put everything together. I still need to close that opening. I'm not going to do that on camera. I'm going to um, get a needle and thread and make a hidden stitch. Now what we need to do is if you're going to do this step, you can get an oven mitt if you're afraid of burning your hands. I'm just so used to it and I do it so quick that I don't worry about it. And just be careful not to pass over your zipper. But, you know, you can put an oven mitt on your hand and iron all this back out nice and neat. So that is our finished bag. So I hope y'all enjoyed this little tutorial. Peace y'all. Bye bye.